Hi, Karen, Anthony, Rila, Samuel, everyone join in. Prabhu, Shiv Kumar, thank you so much. Nina, John, it's wonderful to see all of you all join in to the online. I just wanted to hear from you all, how's the class going so far? Samuel, would you like to share? OK. Samuel, am I audible? You can hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Just yes. want to hear from you how the class has been going so far. Yes. Uh, can you hear me now, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Was fine. Going well. Okay, there's some problem with Samuel's mic. Uh, we are not able to hear you, Samuel. OK. That's OK. Because of the time, we'll start our class. So even before we could begin our session today, we would be going through the Gospel of Luke before we could start. Can I request one of you all to please lead us in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this day. Uh, thank you, Jesus. As we're going to study your word today, I pray that um, our minds will be enlightened and that you speak to us through your word and that um, our knowledge of your word would increase. And uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for um, that we have this uh, opportunity to uh, study, to, uh, to get to know more of your word. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And uh, Thank you, Lord, for our time together here. And I pray that uh, we will learn something new today. And thank you, Lord, for everything. In the name of God, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rin. OK, so today we would be studying on the Gospel of Luke. Let me go ahead and present the slide on the Gospel of Luke. So you're able to view the slide. OK. Good. So we're going to study the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke portrays Jesus as? Anyone remember? Portrays as a man. OK. So the Gospel of Luke talks about Jesus as the perfect man. So let's look into the author. Who's the writer of this book? What do we know about Luke? Is a doctor? Is a physician? Is a companion with Paul? Okay. Okay. That's okay. Okay, Prince, you meet and come. So there's very little controversy over the fact that the author of this book was a man named Luke. You know, maybe one of the reasons why, because they don't write the name. They don't mention the name. So this can be clearly demonstrated uh, by the fact that the writer of the Gospel of Luke is the same who wrote the, the book of Acts. So after the study of the book of Acts, it is very clear that the author for the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts is the same person because the style, the way that both of these books have been written, the style of their writing, it's the same. So there are some facts that the scholars have noted that these two books author is the same. One is the style in the way that these both the books were written, and also the medical language and the technical of the vocabulary that has been used in both these books. And there are about 50 words which are very common of the two books and are found, there's, it's not found elsewhere in the New Testament. And Luke 
was a companion of Apostle Paul and therefore he has been qualified to write the book of Acts because he writes more on the journey with Apostle Paul. And the third point we see is Luke's authorship of both the books have been universally affirmed by the early church. And now Luke as a man, Luke as a man, he was born a little bit background about the author. He was born in Antioch of Syria. He was not a Jew, but a person from a Greek background. And he was educated in the science of medicine. We also see uh, when we turn to Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. If you all have turned, you all can read. Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. Anyone from the Luke, 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 the beloved physician, and Dimas greet you. Luke, Luke, the beloved, beloved Dimas greet you. Here we see he's been addressed as the beloved physician. He had uh, he's been educated as a physician. He was uh, he was different from the two apostles because in the way that he's written these two books. Uh, from a very eloquent background and um, yeah he was more apt to be concerned about his historical records and he was more concerned with the dating then he used to mention whenever he is writing he gives the background of that person in detail like when we turn to chapter one from luke chapter one verse five some of the details that he mentions in this book, which gives a very detailed information. Yes, you can turn to Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and read. And one of y'all can turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. So we will know the writing style of Luke. Okay, let me read Luke chapter 1, verse 5. In the meanwhile, you can turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. So, chapter 1, verse 5 says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the division of Abijah, his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. You see, so detailed, giving the background, giving the history of that person. It, it can only be possible by a learned man who can think it's so very important to give all these details. If you all can turn, if one of you all can turn to chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, and the other person can turn to chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, and you all can read. Can we be quick? In those days, can you hear me? Luke 2, verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. Thank you. The other person? Unmute. Luke chapter 3. 1 and 2. Now in the 15th year of the region of Tiberius, Pontus late being governor of Judea, Herod being track of Galilee, his brother Philip, the track of Ituria and the region of Terconitis and Lysnes, the track of Abilene, while Anans and Caiaphas were high priests. The word of God came to John, the son of Jairus, in the wilderness. Thank you. Thank you, Vimal. Yes, these words are very difficult to pronounce, but then you read well. Thank you. 
Yes. So we see that Luke in detail, he mentions all these details. So it is only a learned man who can give all these, pay attention to all these details. And this writing were more technical in its design. And he gives a very greater place uh, uh, while when he describing the birth of Jesus and to the healing power of the Lord. So we also see that he was possibly a convert of Apostle Paul. Because he was not an eyewitness of Jesus in his earthly ministries. When Jesus was in his earthly ministry, he never visited Jesus. We only see the later part that, that Luke was with Apostle Paul. Okay, so he may have been converted during in the time of Antioch or later in Tarsus. When we read uh, Acts chapter eleven, where uh, you know some of the scholars say that maybe Luke came in contact with Apostle Paul as Paul was ministering in the area of Antioch. When we read Acts chapter eleven, we get to know more about Luke. So he was an occasional traveling companion of. Apostle Paul, because he was drawn to the teaching of Jesus. So what happened? Wherever Apostle Paul went, whenever Apostle Paul visited Rome and he was moving in and around place, we see that Luke became a companion of Apostle Paul. Maybe one of the reasons can be both way learned people. So they could share the intellectual, the way they speak, the way they minister. So Luke was more inf in, uh, influenced by Apostle Paul. And they also shared a very good relationship with Apostle Paul. And um, yeah, in, in, when we read the book of Acts, various chapters, like chapter 16 and 17 and 20, we see how uh, Luke was a good companion to Apostle Paul on his ministry. Okay, Acts chapter 16, 17, and 20. Three chapters. Okay, he was also uh, um, most likely discipled under the leadership of Apostle Paul because the, the style of his writing, if you see, Apostle Paul was the apostle toward Gentiles, isn't it? You see, even Luke, who was the audience of the book of Gospel of Luke? Greeks, the Gentile, the Gentile world was the audience. If you see, he was influenced by Apostle Paul because Apostle Paul was not oriented of ministering only to the Jewish set of people, but he was ministering to the Gentiles. If you see the same idea, the same motive he is carrying in his ministry towards the Gentile people, towards the Greek, that he wants to minister to the Greek, he wants to give Jesus to the Gentiles. So he was one of Paul's most close friend. Where we see in Colossians chapter 4. Can we turn to Colossians chapter 4, verse 14? And one of y'all can turn to Acts chapter 28, verse 2. And the next person can turn to Acts chapter 20, verse 6. Colossians 4.14. Yes, please. Our dear friend Luke, doctor, and Demas sent greetings. Please go ahead, Nina. I, I already read. Uh, you are not able to hear me? Our dear friend Luke, okay. doctor. We are not able to hear and, you as reading. Uh, Nina had unmute her mic, but we were not able to hear. Okay, okay, Nina, no worries. I know you would have read Colossians four fourteen. Okay, which says that it refers this verse refers uh, uh, to Paul referring Luke to be his beloved. Okay, we see that intimate friendship between them. And Acts chapter 20, have anyone turned to Acts chapter 20, verse 6? But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. Read 18, verse 18. Verse 18. Verse 
21 verse 18 sorry and when they had come to him he said to them you know from you know from the first day that i came to asia in what manner i always lived among you okay thank you so what we see when we read acts chapter 20 uh, and acts chapter 21 we see that paul on his last trip to i mean um, luke was accompanying apostle paul on his last trip to jerusalem and when you read acts chapter 28 can i request one of you all if you all have turned to acts chapter 28 verse 2 You're not unmuted. Have you unmuted? The natives showed us extraordinary kindness for because of the rain that had set in and because of the cold, they kindled a fire and received us all. Thank you. So here we see that Luke was with Apostle Paul during the shipwreck on the prison ship to Rome. You know, he accompanied Paul almost in most of the places. We also see uh, Luke was with Apostle Paul during his second imprisonment at Rome, while uh, Paul was writing Second Timothy. Luke was also uh, remained very faithful to Apostle Paul during uh, the end uh, end of his days, the last days of Apostle Paul. We also see the other tradition say about Luke that he was not married. He was most like, uh, likely he is returned to Philippi after Paul's death, and he is believed to have died in Bithynia of natural cause. And some scholars say that he was suggested to be martyred at the age of 80 by crucifixion, but we do not have any proof with regard to it. Okay, So I just leave that there. So the Gospel of Luke was written in the same time frame of the other synoptic gospels gospel of matthew and mark and uh, it was written during the time period of 58 to 63 ad the gospel of luke covers approximately 35 years approximately 35 years of history from uh, announcing of the birth of jesus by john the baptist to the ascension of jesus okay and this book was written to who are the audience the greeks specifically it was, uh, it was actually the gospel of luke is addressed to two types of audience the specific group was greek and then to the gentiles i mean the general audience as well yeah, the Luke, the Gospel of Luke is written in general sense to the Greek world. The Greeks were, uh, they were pursued of the idol of a perfect man. So we see two things. Luke was from a Greek background. Okay, he was from a Greek background. He was the only uh, a Gentile who wrote the New Testament. When we compare the New Testament book, he was the only Gentile who wrote the Gospel of Luke and Acts. Luke traveled and spent a, a, a great amount of time with Apostle Paul. Um, Apostle Paul. And what was the purpose of his writing? The very purpose of his writing, we see that, um, you know, uh, the very first verse of the book, if you can turn to Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 4 when we read we get to know in as much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us it seems good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. So what we see here is writing to a man called Theophilus. Now, who is Theophilus? Who is Theophilus? Anyone? Anyone? 
some say Theophilus may be a title, the Roman government, but some say because he has mentioned excellent Theophilus, that means a human, is addressing a man, okay, who is in a uh, uh, in a, a great rank, is addressing to him, and he was a great influ influential to Luke and to Apostle Paul in the ministry. So he is writing to him and to the Greek audience. Let's look at the things that mark this book as the book of the perfect man. So Luke's gospel were written to the Greeks, which would portray Jesus as the perfect ideal man. So one of the thing is when we read Luke chapter 3, verse 38, Luke chapter 3, verse 38, we see son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. And we also see that he emphasizes Jesus as a normal human experience through the Gospel of Luke. So what are the experiences that he portrays Jesus uh, you know, as a normal human? He gives a full description of Jesus' birth, the childhood, and the human development. Whereas in the other Gospels, they have not been portrayed Jesus as that way. So in detail, when we turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 7, can you all turn to Luke chapter 2 verse 7? The other person can turn to Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And the other can turn to same chapter, chapter 2 verse 49. Next verse 51 and 52. So whoever's turned to Luke chapter 2 verse 7 can unmute and read. Luke chapter and she 2 gave birth to her first son. And she wrapped him in clothes and okay. laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 40. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. The child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom and God's blessings were upon him. Verse 49. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? 51. And then he went, went back with them to Nazareth, where he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all, the, the, all these things in her heart. And 52. Jesus grew both in body and in wisdom, gaining favor with God and men. So these are the certain things that Luke records. Jesus has a human. The first verse, when we read Luke chapter 2, verse 7, we see that Jesus humbled himself as a human birth. Being a son of God, he humbled himself as a human in a very humble way. And verse 40, we see that him as a very natural human childhood, you would have, uh, you know, ran like a child, you would have tripped a stone and fallen, hurt himself. These are the small things that as a child, when he grew, he was the same like us. And Luke 2, 49, when we turn to verse 49, we see that when he was in the temple, when he was in the temple, you know, um, we, we read that Luke 49, he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke with. So there were some things that Jesus as a human, he portrayed himself that he reasoned in the temple. And he also showcased that he was hunger for the knowledge. And in verse 51 and 52, when we read, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. So we see that his subjected, subjection to his human parents. And in verse 52, you see, four things we can make out here. Jesus increased in wisdom stature in favor with god and in favor with man so what do you see the first one he developed intellectually that is the wisdom he developed intellectually second you see he developed physically means he grew in stature 
the third you see he developed spiritually that is favor with god fourth point we see he developed socially he grew in favor with men as well so as a human you had these four things and this full manifestation at the age of 30 was portrayed very clearly in the gospel of luke when we read chapter 3 verse 23 luke chapter 3 verse 23 we see that now jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age though he was son of god he didn't start his ministry as soon as he was born or the minute he started talking no, he waited for the time period. Luke clearly mentions here, at the age of 30, Jesus himself began his ministry at the age of 30 as a son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Luke also portrays Jesus as a man of prayer. More than any other gospel, he was a man of prayer. He was praying. He spent his time. He used to take time. He used to go to the wilderness and pray. He used to take time, the, uh, uh, the gospel says, in the night. Though he ministered during the day to everyone, but in the night he used to set his time aside to have that fellowship with God and pray. We, uh, the scripture also records that Jesus uh, uh, got up early in the morning to pray. Again, it says that, you know, he went aside, he, he went aside, he was alone. Why? He wants to pray. He wants that intimate time with the Father. So just like Jesus, you see, if Jesus need to set time aside to pray with the Father, how much more you and I should set the time to pray? So prayer seemed to be vital. Prayer seemed to be very important in our ministry life. Because in Jesus' ministry, prayer was very important. Though he was son of God, but he set his time in the human age when he was on this earth. He set his time and he prayed. He had this fellowship. He had this communion. He had this relation, intimate relationship with the Father one-on-one -on -one during the time of prayer. If Jesus has set that side, has set aside the time to pray, how much more you and I should set aside? So it is very important for us to set time for prayer. There are other things also. Okay, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are other things that demonstrates Jesus' humanity in the Gospel of Luke, where Luke focuses the need for a human to eat. If you're a human, if you're a man, you need to eat to be physically strong. So he shows Jesus, you know, before and after his resurrection that he ate. Jesus eating. Yes. So Luke focuses on the need when we turn to Luke chapter 4 verse 2. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. In those days he ate nothing and afterward... When they had ended, he was very hungry. You see, Jesus has a human, he was very hungry. We also see uh, when Jesus met, at the, uh, met the Samaritan women at the well, what does the scripture say? He was very thirsty and he was tired. So he sat near the well. So as a human, you see, even he was thirsty. And uh, after the resurrection of Jesus, when he visited his disciples, what did he say? Give me that bread. And he ate. So you see Jesus eating. You see Jesus eating as a human before and after. So Jesus, uh, Luke emphasizes on, uh, on empowering, empowering ministry of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the individual. How Jesus moved. He was also moved in compassion. When Jesus moved with compassion, what happened? When Jesus was ministering to people, he was moved with compassion. And whenever Jesus moved with compassion, you see there was healing. 
there was deliverance, there were signs, wonders, miracles taking place. Jesus moved with compassion uh, uh, when he was ministering to the 5,000 people. He said, how can I send them back home? They may be hungry, their journey is very far. They have a long journey to go ahead. They may get tired, so let us provide some food for them. You see, uh, he was so inspired by the four friends of the paralytic man when they open up the roof and they put, he was so moved with their faith. What happened? There was healing. He was moved at the blind man. Isn't it? Though, he, uh, though the apostle said, asked him to stay quiet, what did the blind man do? Continuously started to cry out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So what happened? Jesus was moved at his faith, at his cry. Because the blind man knew in his heart that Jesus can heal him. Jesus can restore his sight. That's why he never gave in to the words that the disciple asked him, keep quiet, don't cry out, don't scream. He never listened to them because he believed deep in his heart that Jesus can restore his sight. So nothing can stop the faith of this man. And as we know that God looks at the heart attitude, not at the outer appearance. So Jesus, being the Son of God, knew the intention of this man, the cry of his heart, the only faith that he had is God can heal. He placed his faith on God. And that faith drew Jesus no matter how far he was. There was a huge crowd. There was no way for this blind man cry that Jesus could hear him. But then Jesus moved. He came to that blind man. He attended to his cry. The same way the man was lying down at the pool of Bethesda for many years. Though there were many, but Jesus came and attended to him because he had the faith that God would heal him. Jesus moves at the faith. What can draw us to God is the faith that we have. Faith can draw God's attention to us. Okay, back to our class. Okay, we see... Um, yeah. Some of the distinct features from the book of Luke, from the Gospel of Luke. Okay, so one is the term, the volume. You see, 24 chapters. None of the uh, book of the New Testament has 24 chapters, including the Pauline in epistle. Luke, being a well learned person, he could write. He could write 24 chapters he had written in the Gospel of Luke. And even if you see in the book of Acts, very detailed he has written well. So um, the Luke records four songs, which is very unique, distinct feature from this book. Four songs. What are the four songs? Yes. Oh, I didn't put the scripture here. I just put the image. Didn't have time. Yeah. The four songs are here. Mary's Magnificat, Luke chapter 1, verse 46 and 55, when Mary visited Elizabeth. It's a very beautiful illustration. Sorry? Luke chapter 1, verse 29 to 55, if you see. Thirty-nine, sorry, thirty-nine. Okay, thirty-nine. If you see now, Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to the city of Judah. And then, when we see, she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And um, verse forty-two, we see that uh, Elizabeth spoke with a loud voice, saying, "Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your." womb and um, verse 45 says blessed is she who believed for they will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the lord and then in 46 to 55 or 56 we see that how 
Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was filled with the Spirit, and she sings. That's called Mary's Magnificat. What did she sing? She sang, saying, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he was mighty, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty and their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. You see, the song of Mary, the mother of Jesus, has been recorded. And then we see Zechariah's in um, chapter 167 to 79. The way uh, Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of a servant David. You know, all these people had the experience of the Lord, experience of the Holy Spirit. And then you see the angels' Gloria in chapter 2. When Jesus was born, you see the angels sang to the shepherds. Okay, and then you see Simeon uh, in chapter 2, verse 28. Verse 28 to 32, uh, when he waited to see the sight of Messiah, and when he saw that, he, say, he, he, he says like this, he took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people a light to bring revelation to the Gentile and the glory of your people. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they sang these songs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Here we have Zechariah carrying John the Baptist and then Mary, mother of Jesus, visiting Elizabeth. And then the other is Simeon receiving the baby from the parents and, you know, sing the song of sing the song to the lord okay um with that we will end the facts of the gospel of luke there's anything that you have learned you would like to share and um in the gospel of luke we all luke has a greater emphasis on um on the women on the poor and also the children he writes about them, okay, how Jesus ministered to the women and also how Jesus ministered to the poor. Jesus never neglected the poor. In fact, he was there for the poor and also the little children in the ministry. Okay? These are some things that uh, very in detail, very beautifully that he narrates. Gospel, uh, Gospel of Luke narrates about the ministry of Jesus among the women, children and the poor. There's anything that you would like to add on? I know we cannot complete all the details, but then I would encourage all to please read through the Gospel of Luke for a better understanding. So all that has been discussed in the class, all that we study, will have a greater impact when we read. When we read, it is our understanding. Just like how uh, the Gospel writer of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they walked with Jesus. They saw the ministry of Jesus. Like Luke wouldn't have a personal interaction with Jesus, but he heard the ministry of Jesus through Apostle Paul, and he experienced the power of God with which he wrote. Just like them, we also have the same encounter with Jesus. When we read, we hear, we have our own understanding. All of us will have different perspective. 
different understanding through which we can understand. So to have that experience, we need to read the word because God speaks to our heart through his word. Through his word. So I encourage each of y'all as we study and walk through the New Testament, I recommend y'all please take time, make time and read, meditate on these scriptures so that we will have a better understanding. And when we study each book, let each book encounter Jesus in a new way to each of us. When we study each book, we should go in a way like, okay, let me encounter Jesus from Luke's perspective from Matthew's perspective, from John's perspective, okay? So that's how we need to prepare our heart and mind and study and come to the class so we will have a better understanding. So with that, I will end this session. If you would like to share something, please unmute and share so that we can. No, Luke did not meet Jesus on this earthly ministry, but he heard about Jesus through Apostle Paul. He, he, came to, he came to the knowledge of Christ when Apostle Paul, that's what the scholars say, when Apostle Paul was ministering at Antioch, Luke may be in that crowd. And Luke got in touch with Apostle Paul, maybe one of the reason of their highly intellectual background. He was a physician and he was a great scholar. He was trained under the leadership. Apostle Paul was trained under the leadership of um, Gamaliel. Uh, yeah, I was getting Galileo. <laughs> Gamaliel, yes, uh, under the leadership of Gamaliel. Uh, so they, they shared a good relationship and he was trained under the leadership of Apostle Paul. That's why the ministry of Luke was similar to Apostle Paul because Apostle Paul had a heart to minister to the Gentiles. He carried the gospel to the Gentiles. You see, similar with Luke, he carried to the Greek and to the Gentiles. So the audience of the gospel of Luke was to the Greek and to the others. Any other questions before we could end in time of prayer? Anyone from the online? You have unmuted so that even um, look in this. In his book, when he's writing his own book here, um, it's like he knows uh, a lot of it, like how you mentioned um, that he writes in detail. So how did he um, know so much about Jesus, his development, his um, preaching and all of that? So your question is, how did Luke know more about Jesus? about his early childhood, his teaching, preaching. Because, you know, usually, you know, usually what happened those days was apostles and the other preachers who knew about Jesus, they shared the gospel by the word of mouth, by the word of mouth. They used to sit together and narrate the whole story. That's how. The sharing of gospel was not in, in Torah or any letters. The, each one used to come sit together and share what they learned from Jesus. So the disciples would have shared to Apostle Paul. Apostles, Apostle Paul, when he had encountered, we'll get to know, study about Apostle Paul when we study about the Acts. So Apostle Paul, when he had this major encounter, he spent the rest of the days with the disciples knowing and learning of Jesus. Now, Luke was trained by Apostle Paul. So Luke, I mean, Apostle Paul would have shared about Jesus. So whatever he has heard and shared, learned from Apostle Paul and through the other disciples, he was also with Peter. So from Peter, you would have collected some information from Apostle Paul and from the others. So whatever he has collected, he penned it down in detail. Okay. 
yeah that's how the gospel was uh, heard through those days and we are hearing it because they wrote it down they took time to write and that's why it is so important to write so that the generation will be blessed and also they were inspired by the lord to write yeah okay let's end this session with a word of prayer can i request one of you all to please unmute and pray nina would you like to pray yes Father God, we thank you for this time, Lord. We are learning, Lord, about your word and the details. Father God, help us to learn for the glory of Jesus Christ, Lord, and help us to give this to other people who don't know about uh, about Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all next week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.